Well, Kirsty, these are days when the pace of diplomacy has picked up, trying to get ahead of the growing Russian deployments on Ukraine's borders. Key is America's top diplomat, Tony Blinken, who today travelled from Kiev to Berlin to meet French, German and British officials. They're trying to hammer out a common line to take to Geneva tomorrow, where Blinken will fly for talks with the Russians. There's other flights of note too being going on. President Zelensky of Ukraine today heading to Warsaw to garner the backing of Poland in these difficult times. And meanwhile, heading out of Britain, over the North Sea and Baltic, throughout the last few days, flights of RAF C-17s carrying anti-tank missiles to Ukraine. That airlift of weapons reminds us both of the potential price of failure of diplomacy and of the differences among European partners that mean that the British are not taking the more direct route over Germany. It's become clear that Germany was not prepared to expedite the paperwork for the UK to fly across their country. And even as UK weapons arrive in Ukraine, Germany says it will not be sending weapons too. And so the diplomatic rumour mill has it that Germany will not support an American initiative to shut Russia out of the swift international banking transaction system if Vladimir Putin does send his army into Ukraine. Division and poor signalling are hampering the Western response. Yesterday, President Biden suggested a minor Russian incursion into Ukraine would be acceptable. Today, his Secretary of State had to clarify. We have been very clear throughout. Uh, if any Russian military forces move uh, across the Ukrainian border and uh, commit new acts of aggression against Ukraine, um, that will be met with a swift, severe United response from the United States and our allies and partners. And while the key NATO players try to get their message straight, President Macron suggests that the EU shut out of Ukraine diplomacy by Russia needs to have its own position and strengthen its forces. Neither proposal exactly new, but ill-timed in the view of many in the midst of this drama. Well, I have to confess that I don't really understand what he's saying, because we are now in a huge crisis mood. Um, I don't think this is the time to start to sort of be doubtful about the basic principles of European security. I mean, no one really wants to go away from the Helsinki principles or the Paris Charter. And to send that signal at this particular time, I have to confess, I don't really see why that should be done at this time. And as European nations struggle to find consensus and Russian tanks move west, Energy prices remain high, and this tension is one of the things keeping it there, particularly the price of gas. So President Putin notches up another win. His demands for a new post-Cold War security order are central to the talks in Geneva tomorrow. The tension caused between leading EU and NATO members is a bonus from the Kremlin's perspective. And the months-long uncertainty causing soaring gas prices because people fear supplies from the East may be disrupted but that higher price brings more money into the Russian Treasury while taxing Western countries through higher, tax, higher inflation, I beg your pardon. Of course, to keep this going requires continuous military pressure. And at the weekend, some deployments of Russian troops into Belarus began to positions where they could have a short drive towards the Ukrainian capital, prompting fresh concerns in Washington. Those soldiers, around 10,000, join other deployments visible from space in an arc around Ukraine to the north, east and south. And you have units in the, on the Black Sea and Crimea too. Meanwhile, the trains continue shuttling in from as far away as Siberia. And at sea, a group of landing ships has left the Baltic, possibly heading for the Black Sea. As to whether those Ukrainian troops will soon be fighting for their lives, or the current build-up is more about Russia making geopolitical gains, only Vladimir Putin knows that. Kirsty. Thank you, Mark. Well, I'm joined now by Fiona Hill, who served as Senior Director for European and Russian Affairs at the U.S. National Security Council from 2017 to 2019, and also by Tobias Elwood, Chair of the Westminster's Defence Select Committee. Good evening to both of you. Uh, Fiona Hill, first of all, um, uh, the Ukrainian president uh, made short shrift of President Biden's statement. But wasn't President Biden right that a minor incursion wouldn't trigger a response from anyone in NATO? 
Well, I think President Biden was obviously stating the obvious that everybody has uh, been saying, you know, privately and I suppose also on um, newspaper interviews. It was probably best not to say that, you know, directly from uh, the pulpit, but you know, he was being very transparent there. It really depends on what that is. And I think, you know, obviously the White House have tried to clarify it. And what President Biden is worried about is that we will not get the kind of unity that we need to respond to things. Just as Mark has been describing what I think was a pretty good assessment there of the state of play, the biggest risk we run right now is not in having a unified response mm -hmm. and is of, um, you know, European partners basically taking a sigh of relief saying, oh, look, it was just a cyber attack or it was just, you know, moving further forces in and around Donbass. This isn't a full force in invasion. And, uh, you know, we don't really need to take any major so, painful steps here. So I was you... just going to say that what Zelensky said, though, is really important, that there is no such thing yes. as a further minor incursion into Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, just picking up exactly what you were saying there about uh, disunity uh, among NATO members. You, know, you heard Mark say, we heard talk about, you know, that you know, the, the, a huge reluctance in Germany. They weren't allowing overflies. And, of course, they have their own problems with the Nord Stream pipeline, the Gazprom pipeline coming in. And that, that, that really, President Putin has managed to make that division very stark. He has. And um, actually, the more that we fight about things like this, the more that we have all these disagreements, even just fighting about what is it that Vladimir Putin is going to do, that plays exactly yeah. into the game that uh, Putin's playing. And he keeps on you know, changing the terms of the, of the game. You know, we just hear about the troops now moving into Belarus. You know, every point he seems to be um, heading, you know, in the direction that he wants to here. He's a unitary actor. That is his big yeah. advantage. We really need to get our act so, together. So Tobias Elwood, you know, we've got Anthony Blinken tomorrow uh, with Lavrov uh, in Geneva. The cent one of the central issues here is um, Ukraine's membership of NATO. Now, you know, realistically, we know that Ukraine's not going to be joining NATO. So is there going to be some kind of agreement, some kind of, you know, understanding tomorrow? What will they be bargaining for? Well, I think we're going to see the end game. We're going to see Russia walk out of those talks, claim that they have failed, and then that will allow General Grasmyov to uh, to launch the uh, attacks on Putin's agreement. Putin has been running this show ever since NATO and the West and the United States in particular said that we were not going to support Ukraine militarily. Then Putin put his ultimatum towards NATO, saying, back your troops away from the Eastern of Europe. Of course, we had to say no to that. They then moved these combat-ready troop formations uh, that Mark Urban was speaking about. They've already launched cyber attacks as well. Everything is ready to go. An attack is now imminent, and the West is looking very, very weak indeed. And I have to congratulate Britain now for stepping forward, and other countries are now following suit to actually providing weapon systems uh, to Ukraine in their moment of need. But it's very, very late in the day. And there'll be bigger consequences. This isn't just about Ukraine. This is about Russia trying to maintain an escalation of dominance here, you like, to set the new normal, yeah. redrawing the map on his terms that can't be then turned back. Uh, and it's all about Putin having a legacy, looking strong because he's actually distracted by uh, a domestic audience. He needs an adversary uh, that he yeah. can fight so, against, and NATO is, is that adversary. So just, just pick up. So, so in your assessment, you are sort of, you know, percentage-wise, you would say there's, what, 90% chance of an invasion or an incursion? I think it's higher than that. It's, it will be an invasion. Only Putin will know how far um, he will go. There are some not options. He can simply take over the Luhansk, Donetsk area, yeah. which is already in proxy hands. That would qualify so, as an invasion, standing up uh, to NATO. He'd go further than that and link up but, with the land corridor to the Crimea. That will be quite a robust so, move. So, so, so let me put that. Let me put this to, to Fiona. Are, are you are you making the same assessment as Tobias Elwood? Is, is your view that there will be an invasion? You know what we're talking about here is it's Russia and Ukraine. You know it's it's families, it's it's neighbours, it's it's long connections and so forth. It could really implode for Putin as well. Of course, this could uh, very easily be a miscalculation for him. And look, we have to put it even bigger than that. Putin is making this almost like it's a domestic affair, right? Mm -hmm. Just as you described it. Yeah. Families, you know, Ukraine is part of Russia. It's not a real state. All these kinds of things that he said over time. 
he's making it all about NATO and about the United States. But this is a huge challenge to the international system. I think that's starting to come out. I think Ben Wallace, mm -hmm. the UK uh, Defence Secretary, I'd like to commend him for a recent um, opinion piece that he put out on this, calling it out for what it is. This is going to have major international reverberations. So it can't just be Poland and the Baltic states and the UK and the United States uh, stepping up to do something here. On the diplomatic front, we need to have other countries internationally calling mm. Russia out for what it's doing. You know, our other allies and partners around the world need to be stepping up and saying, look, this is not acceptable because it sets so a precedent for every other theatre as well, not just Europe, but Asia, Middle so East, is, Africa, so, you name it. Well, interesting. So, so therefore, what would President Biden do? Because you know, we're all told, you know, of course, that these are two entirely different men, President Trump, President Biden, you work for President Trump. But in the end, is President Biden minded to do any more in support of Ukraine and indeed Estonia or whatever than President, than President Trump was? Well, look, it's the larger um, assessment that everybody has had about the state of affairs. Um, Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Uh, however, it is a member of uh, the United Nations international system. And, you know, again, the point being here, uh, putting aside, you know, previous presidents and things, you know, kind of that we could have uh, done before, here and now, Ukraine is uh, an independent, sovereign country that is being attacked by an outside aggressor. And this should be of great concern to every country internationally. Because if Russia can do this to Ukraine, what's to stop other countries from doing this to neighbours or laying claims? I mean, this is exactly what we fought two world wars against, World War One and World War Two. We've had a whole system in place that's supposed to be pushing back against this. So this is a much bigger challenge. It's not just Ukraine and not just NATO, not just some spat between the US and Russia. This is a really one of those uh, game changers internationally. Well, thank you very much. We could talk a lot longer for this, and I'm sure we'll be back with it. So thank you both very much for joining us.